and welcome. If you are a middle-aged man or a man who is going to approach middle age around 55 years old, then you should watch this video and you should also know about this condition. The condition is called benign prostatic hyperplasia or hypertrophy or in simple words, enlarged prostate. This is not to be confused with prostate cancer, which is entirely different condition. This is a benign condition. It has nothing to do with prostate cancer. And this condition does not increase our risk of developing prostate cancer. As you know, prostate is present only in men. So this condition is limited to men. You might note that I have not called this condition a disease because I do not believe it's a disease it's changing of the body as we grow old. So this does not happen in young people. Almost every man over the age of 55 or 60 will develop some degree of this condition, maybe mild or maybe very severe. So it is very important to understand this condition. What causes this benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH is changes in our hormones. As we grow older, our hormones change. Whether male or a female, we have many different hormones in our body. And to name a few, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, when the balance of these hormones becomes disturbed with age because our body is not producing enough of these hormones, then changes take place in our body. Same thing happens with the prostate gland. As we grow older as men, our prostate gland enlarges because the hormonal balance has changed. And the symptoms are worse in those men who in the past had infection of the prostate gland or prostatitis. So I've drawn a little diagram over here to explain the anatomy. So this is the rectum, which is our bottom end. And this is the anus, which is the exit from the bottom end from which we poo. This is our urinary bladder in which the urine collects before we pass it through the tube, which is the urethra from which the urine is passed out. There I have draw, drawn the scrotum with the testicle in it. The tube that takes the sperm goes around and goes through this red thing which I have drawn, which is the prostate gland. And the semen from our testicle goes through the prostate gland and joins our urethra. So the urine with the tube with, through which the urine passes and the tube through which the sperm comes, they both pass through the prostate gland. Prostate gland sits against our bottom, which is the rectum. Normal prostate gland is size of a walnut and consistency of a solid rubber ball. So it's not very hard. It does not feel like this. It feels soft. So when a doctor examines the prostate gland, say for example, through the rectum, puts the finger in, they should be able to press the prostate gland slightly because it's slightly soft, but they can't press it completely because it's not spongy. Also, if the prostate gland is normal size, the doctor should be able to push the finger from the bottom end and feel the top of the prostate gland with the finger, which means the prostate gland is not enlarged and the, it should feel quite smooth. There should not be any nobbles or bubbles on the surface of the prostate gland. And it should not feel very, very hard because the sign of cancer in the prostate gland is that the prostate becomes very hard. So is there any other way of feeling the prostate gland in the body other than through the rectum? Answer is no. The prostate gland sits right in the depth of our pelvis, just below the urinary bladder and feeling it other than through the rectum is not possible. Now let's see what happens when the prostate gland becomes enlarged. So this prostate gland, I've drawn twice the size it was before. So as you can see, first thing it is doing, it is bulging into the neck of the bladder. So there is a little recess over here on the side of the prostate gland There's a little recess over here on this side of the prostate gland so when the patient wants to pass urine the urine collects in here like a pool so the whole bladder can't empty easily 
Second thing that is happening that you can see the urethra, which is the tube, which takes the urine from the bladder outside is getting pressed. So the prostate gland is literally squishing, squeezing the urethra. So the patient cannot pass urine easily. And third thing you can see when it bulges backwards, it's bulging more towards the rectum, which is the bottom end. So when the doctor tries and examine the prostate gland from the bottom end with the finger, the finger cannot reach the top of the prostate gland because it is too far up, because the prostate has enlarged. So the symptoms that happens with enlarged prostate gland, first of all, is the patient will struggle starting the urine because they have to put more pressure and the bladder has to squeeze harder to push the urine through because the urethra is being closed by the prostate gland. It's being shut by the prostate gland, so the urine can't escape easily. When the urine does manage to come through, then the stream is very weak. So instead of having a very powerful stream of urine, the urine comes out very slowly. And the third thing that happens, again, is that when the bladder is empty, there's still a bit of urine left in this little pocket over here and over here. So although the patient feels that, yes, the bladder is empty, they want to get up. When they get up of the toilet, the urine from this area comes through and starts dribbling through. So the patient drips and dribbles after passing urine, or they want to go back to the toilet to pass the rest of the urine, which is present in these little recess. So those are the main symptoms of enlarged prostate. Struggling to start the urine, not having a forceful stream, and struggling to finish the urine, and they continue to dribble after passing urine. So they are the main symptoms of prostate gland enlargement. If, however, the prostate gland becomes very large and completely closes the urethra, then the patient is unable to pass urine completely. And this can happen very suddenly. And that is called acute urinary retention, that they cannot pass urine. It's a very painful condition because the bladder becomes very large. Sometimes this happens very slowly. And this urinary retention, which is called chronic urinary retention, happens so slowly that the patient does not feel the pain, but still the bladder is very large and they are not passing the urine completely. This increases the risk of urinary infection, damage to the kidneys, etc. So how is the enlargement of the prostate gland diagnosed? Simple tests, which can be done in any doctor's surgery. Urine test to check for infection or check for blood in the urine. Blood test to check for kidney functions, make sure kidneys are functioning okay. And a very important blood test called PSA, which is prostate specific antigen which I have written down over here, PSA, prostate specific antigen. If this is normal, then patient has not got prostate cancer. If this is raised in the blood test, then there is a risk and possibility of having prostate cancer. And the symptoms of prostate cancer, which we will discuss in our next video, are very similar to benign prostatic hypertrophy. And obviously doctor will want to do more tests. Other ways of diagnosing an enlarged prostate, doing an ultrasound scan or a CT or an MRI scan. In some patients, when the diagnosis of prostate cancer is not definitive or borderline, then they may need a biopsy of the prostate gland. And the prostate gland biopsy can be done either passing a needle through the bottom end or through the perineum. So how can benign prostatic hyperplasia be treated? It depends on the symptoms, how mild or how severe the symptoms are, how old the patient is, and how fit the patient is. So, for example, if the symptoms are only mild or moderate, they can still pass urine. So, lifestyle change is very important in these patients. Reduce the intake of alcohol, caffeine, fizzy drinks goes a long way. Don't drink water before two hours before going to bed, otherwise you will have to get up two or three times at night time which, to pass urine, which will disturb your sleep. Avoid constipation, because if you get constipated, 
then the pressure from the rectum is going to push the prostate even more and going to cause more problems with passing urine. Double voiding means that when the patient pass urine first time, they try and get up, walk around a little bit because they will get the desire to go again and then go second time and pass the urine which is collected in the bladder so they, they do not have to go again for a number of hours. Bladder training is very important in patients who have very hyperactive bladder, which means even a small amount of urine in the bladder, they have a desire to pass. In bladder training, basically what happens, they are given a set of exercises and regimes in which what they do, they try not to pass urine for a fixed period of time, even if they have the desire to do so. And that period of time is increased gradually over the period of weeks and months. So their bladder stretches and they can keep urine in the bladder for much longer than they normally can do. Some patients will require continence pads like, you know, nappies to wear, otherwise they'll wet themselves. And sometimes even catheters might be required. Catheters, as you know, are tubes which are passed into the bladder either through the urethra from below or sometime through the tummy to help patient pass urine. This becomes very important in patients who have got acute or chronic urinary retention, as I discussed earlier. Also, sheath catheters can be used, which is like a condom catheter. So they put a sheath on top of the penis, which is connected to a tube. And this is very important for patients who dribble all the time and wet themselves all the time. So when the symptoms becomes more troublesome and the prostate is becoming more large, then some tablets can be used. And I've written the family of the tablets they belong to, alpha blockers. They reduce the size of the prostate gland and relax the prostate gland in the neck of the bladder and helps patients with benign prostatic hypertrophy to pass urine. And the commonest drug given is tamsulosin. Anticholinergic drugs, what they do, they relax the bladder, especially patients who have hyperactive bladder. It helps them to control the urine and helps them with the training of the bladder. 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, again, they shrink the prostate gland and help us pass urine. In patients who cannot pass urine or are requiring catheterization to pass urine or whose symptoms are getting much worse, then they will obviously require surgery, especially if they're fit for surgery. And the commonest operation performed is called TURP, which is transurethral resection of prostate gland, which basically means the surgeon passes a camera from the urethra from down below and cores the prostate gland out, like making a tunnel through the prostate gland. If the prostate is very, very large, then occasionally, an open operation may be required to remove the enlarged prostate. I'm going to briefly mention some very unusual operations which are performed in certain centers around the world, not very commonly performed. The reason is because not many centers have the expertise to do all these procedures or many of these procedures. And also some of these procedures are still experimental and there is not enough data available on these procedures to put them into general medical practice. So prostate urethra lift, implants are put at the bottom of the prostate gland to lift the urethra to help pass the urine. Cystoplasty, Botox injections of the, of the bladder and also sacral nerve stimulation is usually limited to those people or those patients who have a very hyperactive bladder and they can't hold urine in the bladder for a long time. Prostate embolization, the artery to the prostate gland is blocked and what it does, it kills part of the prostate gland and the prostate gland basically shrinks. I hope you found this video informative and if you did, then please do give us a thumbs up, like and please remember to subscribe. Until next time, I see you very soon. Take care.